preparation of lyophilic and lyophobic salts. Preparation of colloidal solution of starch. Materials required. We require an electronic balance, starch powder, butter paper, dropper, spatula, glass rod, pestle and mortar, distilled water, beakers, wire gauze, tripod stand, Bunsen burner, funnel, filter paper, conical flask, iron stand with clamp, etc. Procedure Weigh 1 gram of starch using the electronic balance. Transfer the weighed quantity of starch into the mortar and using the dropper, add a few drops of distilled water to it. Grind the starch with the pestle to make it into a thin paste. Transfer the paste to a 50 ml beaker. Take about 100 ml of distilled water in a 250 ml beaker and heat the beaker so that the water starts boiling. Pour the paste slowly into the boiling water with stirring using a glass rod. Continue boiling for about 10 minutes and then allow the beaker to cool. Fix a filter paper in a funnel which is fixed to a stand and place a glass rod over the funnel. Filter the contents of the beaker through the funnel and collect the filtrate in a conical flask. Label the filtrate as starch salt. Take the starch salt containing sodium chloride in a conical flask. Take a funnel and fix a parchment membrane to the stem of the funnel. Tie the membrane to the stem of the funnel using the thread. Take the starch salt. Pour the starch salt containing sodium chloride into the funnel until two-thirds of the parchment bag is full. Dip the parchment bag into distilled water taken in a beaker and fix the funnel in position by means of the clamp. Allow this to stand for about half an hour. After half an hour, take small amount of water from the beaker using a dropper. Transfer it into a test tube. Take small quantity of iodine solution using a dropper. Add a few drops of iodine solution into the test tube containing water. If the color does not turn blue, it depicts the absence of starch in water. Thus it follows that starch molecules do not diffuse through parchment membrane. Withdraw another 1 ml of water from the beaker. Transfer it into another test tube. Take a few drops of silver nitrate solution using a dropper. Add it into the test tube containing water. A white precipitate of silver chloride produced immediately indicates the presence of chloride ions and hence sodium chloride in water. It follows that sodium and chloride ions diffuse through the parchment membrane. As sodium ion and chloride ion diffuse out of the starch salt, it gets free from ions gradually. Replace the water in the beaker with fresh distilled water. After about 10 minutes, test the presence of chloride ions. Take a small amount of water from the beaker using a dropper. Transfer it into the test tube. Take a few drops of silver nitrate solution using a dropper and add it into the test tube containing water. If no white precipitate is formed, chloride ions are absent. 
This indicates the dialysis is complete, otherwise the salt still contains chloride ions and therefore the dialysis should be continued. Preparation of colloidal solution of egg albumin Materials required We require an egg, beakers, glass rod, 5% sodium chloride solution, filter paper, funnel, conical flask and iron stand with clamp. Procedure Take an egg. Break the outer shell of the egg by striking it with a glass rod. Collect the colorless liquid, egg albumin, along with the yellow yolk in a beaker. Decan the colorless liquid, egg albumin, into another beaker. Transfer the egg albumin into a beaker containing 5% sodium chloride solution. Stir it constantly for about 15 to 20 minutes. Fix a filter paper in a funnel which is fixed to a stand and place a glass rod over the funnel. Filter the contents of the beaker through the funnel and collect the filtrate in a conical flask. Label the filtrate as egg albumin sol. Preparation of colloidal solution of gum. Materials required We require 1 gram gum, dropper, spatula, glass rod, pestle and mortar, distilled water, beakers, wire gauze, tripod stand, bunsen burner, funnel, filter paper, conical flask, iron stand with clamp, etc. Procedure Take 1 gram of gum in a mortar. Add few drops of distilled water using a dropper. Grind the gum using the pestle to make this into a paste. Transfer the paste into a 50 ml beaker using the spatula. Take 100 ml of distilled water in a 250 ml beaker and heat the beaker. Do not boil the water. Warm water is to be used since gum is quite soluble in warm water. Pour the paste slowly into the warm water with stirring using a glass rod. Continue warming for about 10 minutes and then allow the beaker to cool. Fix the filter paper in a funnel which is fixed to a stand and place a glass rod over the funnel. Filter the contents of the beaker through the funnel using the glass rod and collect the filtrate in the conical flask. Label the filtrate as gum sol. To prepare a colloidal solution of aluminium hydroxide, materials required. We require 2% solution of aluminium chloride, silver nitrate solution, dropper, glass rod, distilled water, beakers, wire gauze, tripod stand, bunsen burner, funnel, filter paper, conical flask, parchment membrane, iron stand with clamp, etc. Procedure Take a 250 ml conical flask and clean it by the steaming out process. To this cleaned conical flask, add 100 ml of distilled water.
heats the conical flask containing water to boil by placing the flask over a Bunsen burner. Boil the conical flask containing water by placing the flask over a Bunsen burner. Take 2% aluminium chloride solution using a dropper. Add aluminium chloride solution dropwise to the boiling water. Continue boiling until white gelatinous solution of aluminium hydroxide is formed. Keep the contents of the conical flask undisturbed for some time at room temperature. Label the solution as aluminium hydroxide sol. Take a funnel. Fix a parchment membrane to the funnel. Add the aluminium hydroxide sol into the parchment bag through the funnel until two-thirds of the bag is full. Fix the funnel with the membrane containing sol to a stand. Dip the parchment bag into the distilled water and fix the funnel at that position by means of the clamp. After half an hour, take a small amount of water from the beaker using a dropper. Transfer it into a test tube. Take a few drops of silver nitrate solution using a dropper. Add a few drops of silver nitrate solution into the test tube containing water. A white precipitate of silver chloride produced immediately indicates the presence of chloride ions in water. Replace the water in the beaker with fresh distilled water. Allow it to stand for 10 minutes. Take a small amount of water from the beaker using a dropper. Transfer it into a test tube. Take a few drops of silver nitrate solution using a dropper and add it into the test tube containing water. If white precipitate is formed, dialysis should be continued. If no white precipitate is formed, chloride ions are absent. This indicates that the dialysis is complete, otherwise the salt still contains chloride ions and therefore the dialysis should be continued. To prepare a colloidal solution of ferric hydroxide, materials required, we require 2% solution of ferric chloride, silver nitrate solution, dropper, glass rod, distilled water, beakers, wire gauze, tripod stand, Bunsen burner, funnel, filter paper, conical flask, parchment membrane, iron stand with lamp, etc. Procedure Take a 250 milliliters conical flask and clean it by the steaming out process. To this cleaned conical flask, add 100 milliliters of distilled water. Heat the conical flask containing water to boil by placing the flask over the Bunsen burner. Take 2% ferric chloride solution using a dropper. Add ferric chloride solution dropwise to the boiling water. Continue boiling until deep red or brown solution of ferric hydroxide is obtained. Keep the contents of the conical flask undisturbed for some time at room temperature. Label the solution as ferric hydroxide sol. Take a funnel. Fix a parchment membrane to the stem of the funnel. Using a thread, tie the membrane to the stem of the funnel. Take ferric hydroxide sol. Pour the ferric hydroxide sol into the parchment bag through the funnel till two-thirds of the bag is full. Fix the funnel with the membrane containing sol to a stand. 
dip the parchment bag into distilled water taken in a beaker and fix the funnel in position by means of the clamp. Allow it to stand for about half an hour. After half an hour, take a small amount of water from the beaker using a dropper. Transfer it into the test tube. Take a few drops of silver nitrate solution using a dropper. Add it into the test tube containing water. A white precipitate of silver chloride produced immediately indicates the presence of chloride ions in water. Replace the water in the beaker with fresh distilled water. Allow it to stand for 10 minutes. Take a small amount of water from the beaker using a dropper. Transfer it into a test tube. Take a few drops of silver nitrate solution using a dropper and add it into the test tube containing water. If white precipitate is formed, dialysis should be continued. If no white precipitate is formed, chloride ions are absent. This indicates that dialysis is complete Otherwise, the salt still contains chloride ions and therefore the dialysis should be continued. To prepare colloidal solution of arsenious sulphide. Materials required. We require solid arsenious oxide, hydrogen sulphide gas, distilled water, conical flask, beakers, RB flask, glass rod, glass tube, fluted filter paper, wire gauze, tripod stand, Bunsen burner, Kipps apparatus, iron stand with lamp, etc. Procedure Take a 250 milliliters conical flask Clean it by the steaming out process. Take the cleaned conical flask. To this cleaned flask add 0.2 grams of arsenious oxide. Take 100 milliliters of distilled water in a measuring jar. Pour it into the conical flask containing arsenious oxide. Take the solution. Boil the solution with stirring for about 10 minutes by placing the flask over the Bunsen burner. Arsenious oxide undergoes hydrolysis with boiling distilled water to form arsenous acid. Fix a fluted filter paper in a funnel and place a glass rod over the funnel. Filter the hot solution in the flask through the fluted filter paper and collect the filtrate in another beaker. Pass a slow current of hydrogen sulphide gas into the solution of arsenous acid. Arsenous acid reacts with hydrogen sulphide to form yellow colored arsenious sulphide. Continue passing hydrogen sulphide gas till the intensity of color does not change further. Expel excess of hydrogen sulphide gas from the sol by boiling the sol till the escaping gas does not turn lead acetate paper black. Filter the solution through the fluted filter paper. Collect the bright yellow filtrate in a dry conical flask and cork it. Label the filtrate as arsenious sulphide salt.